our next destination was Thimpu Zong. A Zong is a type of fortress found in the Buddhist kingdoms of the Himalayas, Bhutan and Tibet. Zong architecture is massive in style with towering exterior walls surrounding a complex of courtyards, temples, administrative offices and monks accommodation. Known as the fortress of the glorious religion, Thimpu Zong was built in 1641 on the right side of Wangchu River. The Zong survived two major fires in the past and His Late Majesty Jigme Dorji Wangchuk took the initiative of massive renovation of the Zong in 1962. The entire Zong was rebuilt in traditional fashion without any nails or written plans. Today it houses the Secretariat, the Throne Room and offices of the King of Bhutan. The northern portion is the summer residence of the chief lama and the central monastic body. I tell you, the whole thing was really impressive. Right outside the Zong, there was a little simple looking bungalow and we were surprised to know from Mr. Nurbu that that was the palace of the king. It was really simple. As entry was obviously forbidden, we saluted the king from outside. Today is a bright sunny day and after breakfast we are driving to the next Bhutanese town Punakha. Punakha is just about 72 kilometers from Thimpu. The roads are uphill and it will take more than three hours to reach. Although Punakha is famous for its zong, my main attraction is to cross Dochula Pass on the way to Punakha. Local apples, oranges, yak cheese and garlic. Cheap but tasty.
This is the Chula Pass at 3150 meters from sea level. You can see this spectacular view of the mighty Himalayan mountain ranges going over to China. That one is the highest mountain, the Gongor Pinsum. Okay, it's more than 7,000 meters. All those mountains are totally belong to Bhutan. The beyond that mountain is China, because the border is behind that uh, mountains. Okay. These small temple-like structures are known as Chortans. There are 108 Chortans at the Dochula Pass, adding to the beauty of the high altitude. People offer prayer flags here on the faith that it will save them from the attack of bad spirits. As we left Tochula Pass and came down some thousand feet, we were crossing a huge coniferous reserve forest, really rich and totally undisturbed. As much I could identify, there were juniper, blue pine, cheer pine, taxus, oak, rhododendron and plenty of other large and small trees which are totally unknown to me. It was really a rich natural forest. From the hilltop, when we first saw Punakha, we were already convinced as to why it deserves the reputation as one of the most beautiful and significant regions at the heart of Bhutanese culture. This is the famous Punaka Zong, popularly known as the Palace of Great Happiness. Strategically placed at the junction of the Fo Chu and Mo Chu rivers, Punaka Zong is a serene beauty. If you are yet to see the nature's variety of blue, you have to come to this confluence and feast your eyes. Punaka was the capital of Bhutan until 1955. 
damaged over the centuries by four catastrophic fires and an earthquake, the Jong has been fully restored in the recent years by the fourth king, Jigme Singe Wangchuk. Inside the Jong, we saw the highest standards in woodwork. The coronation hall of all Bhutanese kings, the Jong Chung at the entrance of the Jong, and the cantilever bridge over the Mochu River. Everything was so beautiful and so intricate in Bhutanese art that really it takes away your minds. Even today, Punakha Zong is the winter residence of Bhutan's central monastic body. The Zong houses the most sacred relics of Buddhist religion and the sacred remains of Zabdrung Nagwang Namgyal, the famous Lama from Tibet who preached Buddhism in Bhutan. People say there is something special about visiting the Punakha Zong in the afternoon. The afternoon sun brings out the richness of the paintings. The monks seem to be more relaxed. The pigeons are busy coming back to its roof. And if you are a photographer, you will surely be tempted to catch the melancholic mood of the impressive Punakha Zong. Last evening when we checked in at Hotel Mary Puensam, it was already dark. The beauty of the hotel and its surrounding hills struck me as I got up early morning and went out to the veranda. Unfortunately, there was not much time with us, and after a quick coffee, we had to start for the interesting Divine Madman's Temple. Divine Madman's Temple Lama Drukpa Kunle born in Tibet in 1455, is known throughout Bhutan as the Divine Madman. The Great Lama spent much of his time in Bhutan singing and drinking with young ladies and deflowering virgins. Near the town of Punakha, Drukpa Kunle Lama founded a monastery dedicated to fertility. Each year, hundreds of people come from all over Bhutan to pray for children. In the temple, they are blessed by a monk holding a symbolic phallus. The city of Paro also offers usual sightseeing like the Paro Zong, but we decided to go off route 
and see the village life of Bhutan. This village is about 5 kilometers from Paro and the villagers without any hesitation allowed me to go inside their houses and shoot pictures. Life here is simple, needs are limited, and sustenance did not overpower their happiness. Government provides free health care and education, and the king is loved by all. In an area of 38,000 square kilometer with population less than a million, Bhutan is exceptional where people treasure their natural environment and live in harmony with its elements, respecting the sanctity of life, its mountains, forests and rivers as abodes of gods and spirits. Before we took our flight back to Kolkata, we sincerely wished that the so-called development of today's world at least spared this beautiful country for the sake of the abundant happiness of the Bhutanese people. <laughs>